all have some awesome ways for individuals to learn about how to perform in a healthy way going wow. forward. Yeah, very excited. I'm happy everyone can join us today. Thank you. And I love your logo. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I have to admit to everyone, this is, um, if you've attended any of our sessions in the past, we've always used uh, GoToWebinar. So we, we now have a Zoom license. So this is our very first time hosting uh, a webinar in the Zoom platform. So uh, bear with us if we run into any technical issues, but I think we should be good, so. All righty. It looks like people are starting to join. So we'll just, if everyone's okay, we'll give it another maybe two minutes. Nikki has like a jam-packed um, schedule this morning. So I do want to be mindful of, of everyone's time, um, but welcome. So glad you could be here. We're going to fill it up with juicy nuggets. It's going to be great. Yeah. And I'm just going to actually um, live stream this to our Facebook page as well. The beauty of technology. I love it. Love it. Perfect. Well, I think we should probably get started and those that uh, are late can just um, hop on when they're available. So welcome every, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Vivian. I'm the manager of entrepreneurial services at the city of Brampton and I'm delighted to be your host for this morning's webinar on high performance habits to accelerate your growth. Uh, this session is brought to you by the city of Brampton's Entrepreneur Center. For those of you that are unfamiliar with uh, BEC, we are an innovative partnership between the province of Ontario and the city of Brampton belonging to a very large network of small business centers all across the province of Ontario. So if you're not from Brampton, uh, chances are there is a small business center in the community where you live and work that would be more than willing to work with you to help you grow, uh, start or grow your business. Um, before we begin, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First off, this webinar is being recorded and we are also streaming it live to our Facebook account. Um, we will make uh, the recording available to you at the end of the session. So if you need to rewatch it, uh, it will be available to you. Uh, there will be time at the end for uh, some great Q&A with Nikki. So if you do have a question, you're welcome to use the Q&A uh, box on your participant control panel, or you can simply click the raise hand button and uh, we will call on you, ask you to unmute yourself and you can ask your question directly to Nikki. Um, and lastly, if you if we are unable to get to your question this morning, um, or if there's anything that we can do to uh, continue to support you, please feel free to reach out to us directly at bec at brampton.ca and we'll get, uh, we'll get back to you right away. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning, Nikki Pett. Uh, Nikki presented about a month ago on relationship ROI as part of our Entrepreneurs Connect series, and we are so thrilled to have her uh, back today uh, joining us for her talk on high performance habits. Uh, Nikki is an entrepreneur, an author, a speaker, a passionate trainer, and a certified high performance coach. She's been in the promotion industry since 2000, uh, going on to establish her own company in 2002. And we have worked with Nikki over many years, uh, providing uh, training to many of our entrepreneurs in Brampton. So I'd like to um, ask that you all please join me in giving a very warm Brampton welcome to Nikki. Take it away. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. If you joined us last month uh, for Relationship ROI, uh, right afterwards, we booked this session, and you guys love that workshop. So we are going to dive in today to high-performance habits, and they're really the six secrets of the world's most successful people. And so basically a certified high performance coach like myself, my job is to help people get their mojo back. So some people have been doing 
really, really well through all of, what are we, 17, 18 months in COVID and you feel like you're rocking this thing and your performance levels are the highest they've ever been. And if that is you, awesome. And then some people I know are really struggling and some of it is getting started and knowing what to do next so that they can feel like they're performing well and maybe they're feeling a little bit of a rut. And today I'm gonna share with you tangible ways for you to get your mojo back. And then some of you might be in the middle where you're like, you know, I've been weathering this storm pretty well, um, but I'm always open to new ideas. So welcome to every single one of you today. Here's our agenda. We're going to be talking about why most people fail, the science of high performance, because it is science backed, my surprising results since I've been incorporating the high performance habits. I'm going to share with you those six pillars, so those six secrets. And we're going to talk about a game plan for you. What are the things you can do right away? Um, and then I mentioned to Jennifer, I have a giveaway as well for a couple of participants. And of course, I'm going to go as quickly as possible so that we have time for some question and answer and maybe a little bit of coaching at the very end. So with all that being said, we are on a quest today to find out what do the world highest performing, most successful, most fulfilled people, what do they do differently? Because clearly it is not easy. There are three huge, awful, debilitating problems that hold us back from reaching our very best or being the highest performing person we could possibly be. And the first one is fear. So sometimes we don't change or we don't chase a dream or a goal because of fear of maybe the unknown. Maybe we fear that if we do all of this hard work, it's going to, you know, make us lose time with our friends and family. If I really dive into this new job is going to, or this new business, I'm going to lose time with my family or the process of building a business is going to be just too hard. Or, you know, I left my corporate job to try this. What if at the end, I actually don't think that the grass is any greener. And so fear can hold us back. The other thing is fatigue. So when I work with clients, some of them come to me and they'll say, Nikki, I know exactly what my goals are. I know exactly where I am headed, but girl, I don't think I have the emotional, mental, or physical stamina to actually accomplish these goals. Like we're tired. And then frustration. Sometimes it holds us back when we see other people who have accelerated maybe so much faster and we feel like we should be and maybe we compare. Sometimes we feel that frustration. So how do the world's most successful people, they overcome that fear, the fatigue and frustration and implement the right strategies and habits. You're going to hear me talk a lot about habits today to dramatically advance their lives and careers. So here's what's not working. You know, these are the fundamentals when we start on any project or perhaps start a business. And this is all good advice but it only gets us so far. And it's definitely not at that high performing level. So you may have heard advice from people where they say, you know what, Jen, just start, work hard, be passionate, focus on your strengths, practice a lot, be grateful. I'm a big advocate for gratitude for sure, stick to it. So some of these things help at the very beginning of my career and may help you as well as a foundation but in order for us to really excel and be high performers, there's more. So how do you reach the next level of abundant success while avoiding burnout and false obligations? So that's what I'm going to teach you today based on the world's largest study of high performers. So I want to dive into a little bit of the science here. So some of you may or may not recognize this guy on the left-hand side here. This is Brendan Burchard, and he is a three-time New York Times bestselling author. So he wrote um, several books. One of them is The High Performance Habits, 
which is why you will hear me talking a lot about habits today. So Brendan is the CEO of High Performance Institute. He also happened to be the person who trained me. So this is his curriculum that we go through in order to become certified high performance coaches. He has 10 million fans on Facebook, 200 million video views, ranked one of the most influential leaders in personal growth by Oprah Winfrey Network and Success Magazine. And he's the world's leading high performance coach by Forbes.com. So a little bit of history there. And so he decided that while he was building the High Performance Institute, he was really on a quest like we are to find out why do some individuals and teams succeed more quickly than others and not only succeed, but how do they sustain that success long term? So he went on this quest to collect this data, to do this research. It just intrigued him to know. And so I don't know about you, but um, I have had situations in my life where I've been really focused on hitting a goal, but it wasn't a long-term plan. Like I would have these false starts where it would be a huge goal in revenue one year. And we would go so hard that at the end of it, I was ready to pass out and burn out, right? So this was what intrigued him. Why did some individuals succeed more? But then how can they do that over the long term? And then of those who pull it off, why are so some of them so miserable and others are really happy and fulfilled? So as he was coaching Olympians and celebrities and you know billionaires and multimillionaires, he'd be like on these private jets going, why are some of these people so miserable? And then other people so happy and joyful as they are high performing in their careers. And what motivates people to reach for higher levels of success in the first place? So what kind of habits that's huge training and support help them continue to improve? So I'm not going to go through all the data here, but I just want to show and drive home the point that there's a lot of data and analytics behind the science that I'm going to share with you. And so they took tons of surveys. They did it globally. So it was across, you know, all different ages and genders and nationalities and cultures. They pulled insights from over three thousand high performance coaching sessions and they pulled all of those results together and here's what they found there were 100 plus performance variables so they collected all this data and there was literally over a hundred performance variables so he was on this quest to find out all right that's that's a lot that's a lot for people to digest which habits are actually deliberate so are people that are high performing, are they doing things that it's an unconscious thing? Or are they actually really deliberate and conscious? Is it observable? So is it something that if I see you do it, I can mirror that. I can mimic that and do it myself. Is it malleable? Is it trainable? And is it effective across all domains? And so the good news for us, because we can't memorize and remember a hundred plus habits, they narrowed it down to six. And so if you're not writing, by the way, grab your pen, grab your notebook, and you're going to want to jot these down. So these are the six high performance habits. Number one, the highest performers in the world, they seek clarity. So this is an ongoing thing. They're constantly looking and asking themselves deep questions so they have clarity about life, about the direction of their business, about the direction of their family, what they really want in life. So they have significantly higher levels of clarity than the average performer. The second one is huge. They generate energy. You'll notice that I didn't say they were naturally born with abundant amounts of energy. That's not the case. High performers actually have a shift in mindset where they know they can generate energy. I'm going to share with you ways that you can do that in just a few minutes. And when I talk about my personal story, I'm going to share how I had a shift in my thinking there as well. The next is they raise necessity. 
So why is it important that they show up on their A game? Why does it matter? Who are they impacting? So they really focus on that things go from, it might be nice to have to this absolutely is necessary that I am successful. And they know the reasons why. The next is they have higher levels of productivity and they're constantly doing things to switch up their, maybe their old patterns and they're open to new ideas on how they can boost productivity. And in fact, I'm going to share with you in a little bit how you can increase your productivity by, wait for it, 30% in under five days. I'm going to share with you when we get into some of the uh, hands-on work in a few moments. The next is they develop influence. So I want to make a really important point here that influence in high performance is not about manipulation. Influence in high performance is about seeing that common positive goal and getting other people to come along beside you and rallying the troops and you know it's going to benefit you and it's going to benefit them. So influence in high performance is definitely seen in a really positive way. Influence could be looking at how we get people to maybe change their thinking or influence is challenging someone to rise up and be better than the person they are right now. And then the Sixth one is that they demonstrate courage. The highest performers in the world absolutely stretch that courage muscle on a regular basis and they do so more than the average person. And so this courage comes into play. Maybe it's trying new things, putting themselves out there. A big one in high performance when we do a lot of coaching, that courage is around courageous conversations. So what do I mean by that? Courageous conversations are those conversations where you know someone has done or said something that's really upset you. And it's something that's been on your mind and you know that you need to have that conversation. It takes courage to do so. Sometimes it's advocating for someone. So that courage is speaking your truth or maybe speaking up for justice. So the highest performers in the world, they demonstrate courage more often. So the Institute defined high performance this way. It is succeeding beyond standard norms consistently over the long term while, and this is huge, we're not burning out anymore. We are maintaining our well-being, our balance, and our positive relationships. So it is actually defined as this beautiful statement. It feels like the full engagement of joy and confidence that comes from giving your absolute best. Here's what's also cool. When they pulled all of that data, the highest performers are not strongly connected to age, gender, nationality, intelligent, personality, strengths. Like I coach people who will get so caught up in, well, my strengths profile says this about me. And here's the thing, new science actually shows that that changes as we evolve and as we mature. So those, you know, sometimes we put ourselves into those boxes, but we can be high performers. Like in this case, Sometimes people will say, well, I can't put myself out there. I'm an introvert, but we change over time. And so it's not connected to your personality or your strengths or creativity or empathy or years of experience or compensation. That means if you are green, green, green to what you do, you can outperform people who've been doing it a decade or two decades longer when you step up as a high performer. So so what, Nikki? The real questions become, how did those high performers get that way? How do they develop those habits? And how do they keep growing to succeed long term? So I want to share with you just briefly my surprising results. So this is a picture that um, I wanted to share with you to give you a, like a real tangible view of really how powerful high performance habits can be. So on the left hand side, and this isn't about weight loss, it isn't about diets, although I will tell you that a lot of people who go through high performance coaching, they 
work on their exercise and they trim up and they lose weight. And so this is not about that, but I want to just share with you some of the things that shifted for me when I started using and adopting all of these tools and techniques from high performance habits. So on the left-hand side, this is someone who worked many, many hours um, at the expense of relationships. This is someone on the left-hand side. I was determined. It wasn't like I wasn't trying. I was doing my very best. I was dieting. I was, you know, hustling like crazy at work. And then on the right-hand side is someone who has adopted these habits. And most importantly, a lot of high performance is a change in mindset. So remember I told you at uh, just a few slides ago, I told you about high performers. They know that they actually generate energy. I can tell you that I'm in the best shape of my life right now. And it is because of a simple shift in thinking. I used to buy into the lie that I did not have the energy to work out until I learned through the high performance training that you are a powerhouse, you generate energy. So when you are feeling sluggish, you have that power inside of you to get moving and that actually creates momentum and creates energy. So I'm in the best shape of my life I have a healthy relationship for once with exercise and with food. Um, I feel energized like I haven't before. Um, number The point here, number four, is that I have way less espresso and caffeinated chocolate. I will tell you, I've been in the personal development space and been doing coaching and courses for several years. And some of those courses would be, gosh, 10, 12 hour days of training. And the entire time I was popped up on double espressos and caffeinated chocolate. And I'm pleased to report that since I've been using some of the energy replenishing tools that I'm going to share with you in a bit, that I can go in a five day virtual course in front of Zoom and it is a long day, but I can leave at the end of the day with the same energy that I have coming into that morning. I'm fired up on a Friday at the end of the week. Imagine not passing out and crashing and watching Netflix, but actually having the energy to go out and be with friends or do something new around the house or try a new adventure with your partner. So it has been, there's been some significant shifts for me, best shape of my life, that new determination. So that new level of necessity and thinking of who needs me on my A game. This is a question I ask myself and high performers ask themselves every day. So in my journal this morning, who needs me on my A-game? Jen needs me on my A-game. She needs me to bring the joy and bring a vivacious energy and to serve you guys so that you will leave feeling empowered, like you have new ideas, new ways of thinking, and actual tactical tools that you can use right away. A really big one here and the last point I'll make under some of these changes has been a tremendous improvement in my relationship, both professionally as well as personally. Why? Because I've adopted this habit of courage, of stretching that muscle and having those difficult conversations. I did not speak my truth, guys, until I was 40 years old. I've been on this high performance journey for three years. And in the past three years, I'm able to really tackle those challenges head on instead of stuffing them. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you'll see I talk a lot. I'm very candid and I'll share some of the things that of course I still do wrong, but I will tell you courage becomes easier and it is an integral part of high performance. So enough about me. The real questions remain because I know this is why you're here. You want to know how did high performers get that way? How did they develop those habits and how do they keep growing to succeed long term? So we are going to jump into the six pillars of high performance. And so the answer is that successful people, they sought breakthroughs, training and coaching in these six areas. I have a quote out on LinkedIn that kind of summarizes this. It's, it's like 
we are uh, the questions that we are willing to answer are going to determine our level of success. So sometimes we need to look deep inside and seek that clarity and ask those thought provoking questions that we rarely, rarely stop to do because we're so darn busy. So I want to go through each of these pillars with you and we're going to do some hands on work. So you don't have to worry. I'm not going to call on anyone or put anyone on the spot. But in order to get the very most out of this session today, I would encourage you write down the questions I share and answer them. And if you don't get to all of them today, take some time either this evening or this weekend to really reflect. So let's dive into these six pillars. First, we have psychology. So psychology is all about those either positive or negative patterns in our brain. Psychology, when we talk about this in a high performance, we work through what are some of the things that hold me back and why do I think that way? And are there new ways of thinking? Do I, am I able to manage those thought patterns so that I can have control? I talk about um, ensuring that you talk to yourself rather than listen to yourself. This is really important. Write that down. You want to talk to yourself versus listen to yourself. Why? Because our brains are primal brains and they are scanning the horizon because way back when its number one job was to protect us. And so what it does is it's always looking for the negative. It means you and I need to be pushing that out and replacing it with positive affirmations and positive thoughts. So really important to psychology. The next is physiology. So physiology isn't just about our physical energy. It's about our mental energy, our emotional energy and vibrancy. It's about knowing at the end of the day, do I have the same emotional and mental energy that I can really engage and be present with the people in my family. So physiology is also your tone and gesturing as well. Productivity. I shared with you that the highest producers are typically 30% more productive and they're working on the needle moving activities. It's not about working on small things to, to just, you know, pick off some tasks. It's working on the things that absolutely matter. And full disclosure, early in my career, I was trained that productivity meant just getting a bunch of things done first thing in the morning in order for you to feel like you're gaining momentum. And I'm going to call it on this one that there's been shifts. We know that the highest performers the most productive that have 30% more productivity do one thing very differently. First thing in the morning, rather than tackling those small tasks, the first hour is absolutely sacred at your desk. It means that you do not check your email. You dive right in to that strategic plan or that strategic rock or that big business idea or the things that are going to move the needle to help your business grow. And they tackle this without the distraction of email because they know, this is what Brendan talks about, your email, that inbox is a perfectly organized agenda or sorry, perfectly organized system of other people's agendas. Think about that. You can boost your productivity. And I hope you guys try this for five business days. Rather than getting right into your email, as soon as you sit down at your desk or your laptop, go right to the big activity that matters the most for your business. The next is people. So we all know people who maybe have a great mindset. They are physically vibrant. They're in awesome shape. They are really productive. They can't connect with people, right? They don't have any people skills. And so we know that this is a really important part of, it's a piece, a huge piece of the puzzle. The next is purpose. So purpose here is like, why am I doing all this? High performers know that they have a clear path and a clear purpose. 
And then the next is presence. So if you joined me for relationship ROI last month, you know that being 100% present is going to absolutely differentiate you in business interactions. This is going to separate you in your levels of performance. And so the highest performers are in the now. Like right now, I am, I hope you feel it, that I am here 100%. I'm not thinking about the meetings that happened earlier today. I'm not thinking about a coaching call that's going to happen an hour from now. I am here and with you. So those are the six pillars. Now it's time for you to dive in and to do some hands-on work. So let's see how you measure up. And most importantly, how do you improve? How do you take some of these ideas and really advance your life? So under psychology, ask yourself, am I living my truth? Do my thoughts serve me? So again, going back to, am I listening to those naturally inclined thoughts of negativity? Or am I being really purposeful about what I allow into my mind? Do I feel the confidence and joy that I wanted at this stage in my life? And if you're answering no to that, what is making that shift happen? What's making it uncomfortable? How could you feel more confident? What one thing could you do to bring more joy into your life? Ask yourself, what three words really define who I am as a person and am I living those three words congruently? We're going to do an exercise at the end where we're going to map out two sets of words. But for now, write down what three words define who you are as a person. So jot those ones down. And are you living them not only congruently, but is it consistent? So it's not those short, short bursts. This is like who you are. It's ingrained. The next is physiology. So do I feel an extraordinary level of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy? I want you guys to write this down on your pad of paper, write physical one through 10, write on the next line, mental one through 10, emotional one through 10, spiritual one through 10. Rate yourself. The highest performers in the world are constantly rating and grading how they're doing. And the reason that we do this, it's not for, you're not judging. If you are, you know, physically, I would say your one is like, you are couch bound and you're not going anywhere. And then a physical 10 would be, you're in the best shape of your life. You have feel awesome energy and vibrancy. That would be a 10. Some of you guys might be somewhere in the middle. So my question to you today is, First of all, be honest, like it's just a foundation. No one's going to see it, but you need that baseline. But here's where the power is. If you're a six or a seven in any of these areas, what is one thing? What is your one next move to get you to inch to the next number? Or if you're feeling really ambitious, if you're at a seven, what's it going to take to get you to a 10? And so obviously we're not going to have time to dive into all of that right now. This is going to be a little bit of homework later to really make this effective for you. Am I sleeping, eating, exercising, hydrating, gesturing, and speaking with enough passion to generate the emotions and influence that I desire? So again, take some time to reflect. Um, when we do energy one-on-one -on -one with clients and in group, we, send, we spend a whole session on energy and sleep comes up a lot for people. People have bought into the myth that you can operate on four and five hours of sleep and the science just absolutely dispels that myth. You need seven to eight hours of rest. And so I can tell you that I see changes with clients when they prioritize that sleep. So take some time as well to grade yourself one through 10. Are you doing some of these things? Productivity. Am I doing my life's work or is it just busy work? Meaning, do I have that mindset each morning when I go into the day and am I just ticking off those tasks that take two minutes or less to feel good that I've done some things? Or do I really feel like I'm contributing on a really high level? Oh, I love this question. 
what would it take to five times my productivity each week? That's an awesome question. Ask yourself in any of these areas, by the way, like if you were to look at your physical energy, what would it take for me to be five times more energetic, right? What would it take for me to be five times more productive? These are such awesome questions that we do not ask ourselves and generate some ideas, work with someone, work with a friend or family member, be thinking through it helps expand the way that we're thinking about each of these different topics. What major projects must I achieve in the next 90 days and with absolute excellence? You'll notice there's a key word in here. That word is must. It's right, that raising of necessity. Why is it important that I reach these goals? So we cannot hit a target we do not see. So make sure that those 90-day goals are crystal clear and written out. The next is people. Have I developed the people skills needed to serve as well as lead? So do I have the skills to lead a team? Will they buy into my ideas? And if not, what could I do to either improve my communication style or my confidence in doing so? Can I influence and persuade people to believe in me, buy from me, follow me, invest in me and support me? As entrepreneurs, we must be able to do this. So really reflect on how effective do you feel you're being and what can you do to move the needle forward? This is a really big question. And when I do these workshops and when we talk about this in coaching, this really strikes a chord. People get almost emotional when we discuss this topic. Um, who do you need to be a role model for? Who is it that needs you to maybe even step up and be an even greater role model for? So jot that person's name down. In high performance, a lot of what we talk about and a lot of high performers shift their thinking from, it's not just about what I can gain through this process and you know, asking these questions for clarity, but it's who else am I impacting? Why else does it matter? Which ties into presence as well. So am I showing up and living a fully engaged life? What am I avoiding? This one is huge. If you haven't written down any questions, any of these till now, I'm gonna encourage you to write this down. And something might come to mind right away. Very rarely do I get crickets when I ask this question when I'm doing coaching. Like people know there's things that maybe conversations they need to address, things that they haven't talked about that they know they need to and they're stuffing it. So what are you avoiding? I encourage you to write it down because we're gonna do an exercise in just a minute that's gonna prepare you to have that conversation. Did I make you sweat saying that? Is the heart racing a little bit? I hope so. Okay, who needs me on my A game today? So who needs me to show up and bring my A game? I know some of the high performers that I work with, they actually have this on their desk. So they'll have a reminder that tells them who needs them on their A game. What would life feel like right now if I was living more in the present, more in the moment, more in the now. Ask yourself, like, how would that change? How would my productivity change if my mind wasn't swirling and thinking about other things? And purpose. How do I stay on my unique path despite all of the distractions? We have had a tremendous amount of distractions over the past two years crisis, politics, there's been a lot that has been very distracting. So how do you stay on that unique path? How do I really know what that path even is? Another question is asking yourself, when should I quit something versus sticking it out? So the highest performers are asking themselves these questions about all of these areas. What makes me feel fully alive so that I can give. I have saw a profound shift really in my thinking where prior to working through some of these questions and really getting into high performance, 
a lot of what I based my success and my joy and fulfillment on was the numbers when I built a team. So the amount of people on the team, the amount of revenue, and I can tell you that the highest performers and the shifts that happen is that you start thinking it's not about what I can achieve, but it actually shifts to who can I serve? Who can I really impact? When your purpose shifts that way, I actually have goosebumps talking about it legit because you have to ask yourself this question, put it in this perspective. If you were to wake up tomorrow morning and there were $15 million in your bank account. So you just inherited from an amazing auntie or uncle somewhere in the world. And you've got $15 million in your bank account. What are you going to do differently? Are you going to be on the same path that you're on today? Or is there something else that you know would fulfill you so much more? And so I can tell you with full integrity, if I woke up tomorrow morning, less maybe, and there were $15 million in my bank account, I would be showing up and doing coaching again tomorrow because it absolutely fills my cup. So that is purpose and some really great open-ended thought-provoking questions to be thinking about. So let's talk about your game plan. First of all, how important are all of these? They are absolutely everything to your levels of high performance. So we're going to dive into some tactical pieces. I want to make sure I'm watching the time. Okay, Jen, I'm going to pick up the pace here. So here we go because I want them to have some meat and some takeaways. Number one, that first circle, is exercise, generate energy. I hope that I've helped shift your thinking when it comes to energy. Some of the people I coach with are on the couch and for them, I say, get out for 10 minute walks. Other people, if you are like, Nikki, I'm at an eight or a nine when it comes to my health, awesome. Here's a question I wanna ask you. What would happen if you were to get in the most insane shape of your life in the next 12 months? What's one thing you would need to do? The next part here, that's hero in the middle, represents a courageous conversation. So I want to walk you through this exercise, Jen. I know it's going to cut about three minutes into our Q&A, but I think it's really important. And so I want each and every one of you, no one's looking, no one can see you, put your both feet on the floor, close your eyes, and we're going to take a couple of cleansing breaths together. With your eyes closed, guys, I asked you a question a few minutes ago about something you've been avoiding. And chances are it's probably a courageous conversation that needs to happen. So if you're thinking about someone that you know you need to have a courageous conversation with, or it could be like you haven't completely shared how you're really feeling, what I want you to imagine is standing behind you your very best self. And that very best self actually shows up as your hero, that hero that is absolutely fearless and is going to champion you on to say exactly what it is you need to say. And so this may, for some of you, be a journaling prompt that might take an hour or two. And for others, you know exactly what you need to say. I would encourage you, you can open your eyes. I would encourage you to jot down that conversation that needs to happen and maybe go through that exercise. Now that you need, you know how to do it, some cleansing breaths and imagine that hero with their cape beside you and actually go through that conversation. Sometimes in, in high performance, it's just walking through and playing role playing that. And so I'd encourage you to do that today. Okay. Moving on, we have our egg timer. Y'all, this is going to be the biggest hack for you to generate energy and sustain energy throughout the entire day. Every time I sit down at my desk, I crank this bad boy to 60 minutes. 
every 60 minutes it gets off. I get up, I either do a breathing exercise, I'll go for a walk around the block, I will grab some water, I will take the dog outside, I will do jumping jacks, I will do whatever to get my energy back. And so this is a hack that will ensure you have sustained energy. Think about it this way if you're resistant. A Formula One car does not go into the pit stop because it needs to. It goes to the pit stop because it knows it's in better condition getting back out on the track. So if you're typo at A and you're like, Nikki, I can't justify taking a break. Trust me, it will change your world. All right, next icon here represents a meditation that you can do. So we don't have time to go through it today. I would encourage you to check out on YouTube. It is, Brett. if you just put in Brendan Burchard, release meditation. This is a meditation you can do at your desk that is really, it takes two minutes, by the way, which will completely help you reframe and set intentions before either going into a difficult conversation or coming out of a difficult conversation or a meeting or a, maybe a courageous conversation you had with a client. This will help you reframe and be 100% ready and in the right headspace to work on your next task. And then on the right hand side, this is all about diving deeper into some of these questions. It's about being intentional. I asked you a few slides ago what three words were that describe you. Some of you are going to feel really proud of those words, and then others are going to feel like, I actually wish these words were different. I wish I was reflecting someone else or projecting someone else. And so I want to encourage you after this to take time to actually write three words that might not describe who you are today, but will describe the very best of who you could be. Meaning that if you were performing at the highest level and you're impressing yourself, what do those three words look like? And then another important action step is write out why you chose each of those words. That brings more purpose and clarity and energy behind it. So those are some tactical tools that you can use right away. I did promise Jen as well um, that I do have two copies of the Intentional Leader Journal, which she will do a draw at, uh, at the end. All good. We're going to do some Q&A. I just want to wrap up before we go to question and answer with a quote, which is one of my favorites. And it is that the highest performers are not born. They are conditioned by habit, which means that every single one of us can take these tools and use them in our lives to be the highest performers possible. So thank you so much. I'm going to stop my screen share and we'll go to Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nikki. That was absolutely incredible. And I think everyone here could um, walk away with some very simple ideas to start living uh, with more intention and to really um, show up as the best versions of themselves. So um, thank, thank you. you so much for the amazing tips. And uh, we'll just, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll do a draw for everybody that um, was on today's uh, call this morning and um, we'll reach out to you to let you know if you were the winner of one of uh, Nikki's giveaways. So thank you so much. I'm just going to quickly check the um, the chat box. A lot of thank yous. Uh, oh, thank you for so great welcome. info um, and great questions that I'll be asking myself this weekend. Uh, so Good. just a friendly reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, you're more than welcome to type in the uh, chat or question box or if you'd like to direct your question directly to Nikki, feel free to, to click on that raise hand button and uh, we can uh, unmute you. Yeah, yeah a brave, a courageous soul. I love it. Let's see here, question. Oh. oh, here we go. How do I find out what my purpose is? Ooh, okay. So I love this question because a lot of the people that I coach with, this is like the underlying thing. They'll come and be like, I know what goals are, but like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? And so we work through that process by asking these questions. 
because people buy into the myth that, you know, that purpose is just going to hit them like a bolt of lightning, right? And we're almost disappointed when we don't have these aha moments. And what I have noticed is actually through not only people I coach, but myself included is like, sometimes your purpose changes, right? It changes over time, but you will find clarity and be, you'll get closer to knowing what that purpose is by asking some of the questions that we've talked about today. Like it's diving into those questions that no one right? Like we go through life so busy. I'm so thrilled to see that journaling has become like such a popular thing right now because it's so healthy for us to be introspective and to really look at, you know, why am I here? What brings me, I would say a question or to answer that, I wasn't sure who asked that question, but um, to answer that as well is to ask yourself, like, what fires me up? What are the, what am I doing on those days where, man, I sit at my desk and the next thing I know it's five o'clock and I feel like a bandit because I'm getting paid to do what I do. That will lead you towards really what your purpose is when you're in flow. So time goes by quickly. You feel a deep sense of fulfillment. Um, but yeah, it's found through seeking clarity. Um, another question came in from Tinder. How do I improve my people skills and physiology? Ooh, so I'm going to tackle physiology first because that one is a really easy one. And um, it's about getting moving. Honestly, I promise you that I, even this past week, I have seen outstanding results from my group where everyone's committing to getting moving. And it's also being aware of like your gesturing and your energy and the presence that you bring to even Zoom chats, right? Like it would be really difficult in a really long hour if I was monotone and I was kind of really boring and didn't bring a ton of energy, but I'm purposeful about bringing that energy. So it's checking that energy. Um, getting exercising, Getting exercising is going to be a huge part of boosting the physiology. And then for people skills, um, this kind of ties into relationship ROI a little bit, but I would say that the number one thing would be to be super intentional about becoming a masterful listener. When people feel heard, they feel understood and they feel connected to you. So it's actually probably a one hour session on its own, but I would say, that that would be the key thing is like really being 100% present and showing up for people and listening. Yeah. Just gonna quickly check the chat box. I guess I have a question and yeah. this is kind of around productivity. I have a hard time saying no to things. Do you have any tips and suggestions on ways to say no, but feel comfortable in doing that. Because I think we get so much thrown at us all the time. And there are some things that maybe we do just need to say no, or else if we end up spending our time focusing on something that we shouldn't, then it takes away from our focus on some of the more important things that we need to get accomplished. Yeah. So great question, Jen. And the highest performers are actually, um, they stretch that courage muscle and they're very bold about their availability. So like a high performer will say, and you can grab these, these are not things that I have come up with. They're things that I've learned along the way. One of the most powerful ones is I'm at maximum capacity this month. Feel free to reach out to me next month on this mm -hmm. or um, if this is coming maybe from someone else, like a, like a boss, right. It's yeah. saying, you know what, I want to show up and be the most productive. We have a lot of things on the table right now. What is the urgent priority? What is the priority? Not urgent. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have said, cause a lot of things can be urgent. I worked for a guy who would send 43 emails in the morning and every single one of them was marked urgent. 
breathe, breathe. We have breathing exercises for that. <laughs> right. But it's prioritizing and it's saying like, I am at maximum capacity right now. Cause we do sometimes buy into false obligations mm-hmm. where we think that we need to be saying yes. And um, I can actually also pull up for you. There's an amazing, um, the holistic psychologist on Instagram is awesome. She has like swipe tools and they're like five or six ways to say no in a really polite way. Um, And then the other one is uh, she wrote the book called Boundary Boss and her name is Terry Cole. Really good one to look up as well. And uh, she does a lot of like um, family boundaries and relationship boundaries as well. But we absolutely have a difficult time saying no in our personal lives too. But I would say my go-to is I'm at maximum capacity. Please feel free to circle back next week or next month or whatever you're comfortable saying in that situation. Uh, another question came in anonymously. What top three books would you recommend? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, of course, High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Someone just said that the audio cut, can we, can someone throw in the um, chat and let us know if you can still hear us? Yeah, I can still hear you. Audio is good for you. Fabuloso. Yep. Okay. So, uh, well, good thing that happened with, you know, a few minutes left and not at the beginning. We're good. (laughs) Still good. Okay, thanks. Uh, So I would say High Performance Habits, absolutely, by Brennan Burchard. Um, You will devour it. This book started out as 2,000 pages and they had to condense it to 420. But y'all, it's worth it. Um, So I would say that for sure. Um, How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole. It's a lot about journaling. She's the holistic psychologist um, that I just mentioned. And then, you know what my go-to is for, you know, if I'm feeling in a funk, because we all get in funks, right? Myself included. I love going to Richard Branson and read something like, screw it, let's do it. Like the guy is fearless. He was in space this week. Insane. So I find for that, it's just like, breathing in some of his intoxicating optimism. Um, But yeah, there's lots, lots of books, but those are my three. Amazing. I've definitely made some notes here. So I'll be uh, looking those up. I know we have the High Performance Habits book, I believe in our library at the Entrepreneur Center. Um, But the other two might be uh, new additions that we'll have to add so that uh, when we do get back to our space, people will be... um, able to read them. So thank you for the recommendations. Doesn't look like there are any other questions. Um, Last chance for questions for Nikki. Uh, But I guess we'll just wrap up here and give people time if they do. But thank you so much. Appreciate your time. As Mm -hmm. always, we love working with you and uh, can't wait to have you back. Brampton, hopefully maybe in person the next time, which would be uh, amazing. But thank you again so much for your time. Um, just really love your your insight and your great takeaways. I think everyone here is probably, I couldn't see what was happening, but I think everyone is probably frantically writing down notes. So um, we will share the recording with you so that you have an opportunity to, to listen again if, if need be. And Thank you so much for being here, for for taking the time to join us this morning. And um, hopefully when you leave here, you have a wonderful Thursday and a great weekend. And thank you so much all for being here. It doesn't look like there are any questions. So I think we can end here right at 12 o'clock on the dot. So hey, look at that. And feel free to reach out on LinkedIn because I do little snippets of some of these tips, you know, tools and ideas there too. So Feel free to reach Amazing. Out. Amazing. And we will do a draw um, for everyone that was on today's call and we will connect with you to figure out uh, the best way of getting you the, the book. So thank you again, Nikki. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank Take you. Care, everyone. Bye. Bye.